How many people had fun playing that game earlier? Nine. Fun? Okay. Alrighty, we're just going to start off because I am running a little late. So no talking. Alright. Nathan. No, thank you. Alright, so I know it's been a while since we have an actual service. It's been about three weeks. We're in the second week of the Certain Series Influences. Everyone say the influences. Influences. Last time we talked about our influences. And we asked the question, are you a good or a bad influence? It's a pretty, pretty simple question. We talked about how you older students have to set the example for the younger ones. And how you act and how you listen. Most of you probably think you guys are a good influence. Or at least try to be. Some people act like bad influences. Like Nathan talking right now. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Come on, guys. It's real good. How many people want to be a bad influence, though? No one raise your hand. That was a trick question. How do we be a good influence to a, a very bad and rough world? How do we change that? How many are surrounded by a bad influence on a daily basis? How many are surrounded by a good influence on a daily basis? Okay, do not say their name, but how many are sitting behind a bad influence? Behind. Okay. Behind. Alright, really, guys, come on. Come on. How many can come up with an influence and do not say their name? That's a bad influence at home. Just raise your hand. You don't have to come up with a name. You can probably think of one of the worst influences. Come on, guys. It's really good. Wait, hold on. One other question. Could you think of someone that's a bad influence at home? Um, no names. Alright, now think of your worst influence. Alright, everyone got one? Well, you're wrong. The, more, the worst influence you can have is Satan. Satan is the worst influence on your life. The title of my sermon today is, It Looks Pleasing. Everyone say, It Looks Pleasing. It Looks Pleasing. I want to start in Genesis chapter 3. If you have your Bible, you can go to Genesis chapter 3. We're going to start off in the third verse. Actually, the first verse. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other of the wild animals. The Lord God of He said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from the tree in the middle of the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat the fruit from the tree in the middle. And you must not touch it or you will surely die. You will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman. For God knows that when you eat from when you eat it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good from evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it. Then their eyes were both open, and they realized that they were naked, so they sewed big leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Notice the first thing that the serpent said. Did God really say you must not eat from the tree of any of the trees? And Satan, Satan was like, did he really say that? Did he really say that, sister? He said, no, no, I just can't eat from the one in the middle or I will die. And he said, you will certainly not die. Satan will always try to make you doubt God, no matter what it is. He said, if you eat it, you will be like God and you will know good from evil. Satan tempts Eve by saying you will be like God. We all have a friend like this that tries to get you to uh, smoke a blunt or, or try drinking or vaping. And it's cool, but it's not. It's a bad influence. Come on, guys. These friends, or so-called friends, do the same thing to you like Satan does. They try to influence you in a bad way. The serpent pretended to care about Eve. 
in the Amplified Version of the Bible says, Satan was skilled in deceit. He is the greatest pretender you'll ever know. Do you think the serpent really cared about Eve? No. no. He pretended to care. Crossfire, a true friend will not tempt you or influence you to do something that isn't good for you. I'm going to say that one more time. A good friend will not influence you to do something bad, to do something that's not good for you. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 6, in the TLB version, Now the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a thing of lust for the eyes, and that the tree was desirable, desirable for impairing wisdom. So she took it, the fruit, she ate it. She also gave her husband some who ate it. The Bible says that the tree, and the fruit of the tree was lust to their eyes. It looked really good to them. Excuse me. Now keep in mind, God told her not to eat it. But Satan convinced her, or influenced her, to look at it. And boys, you know, it looked good. Kind of like that hot girl walking down the hallway. <laughs> Verse 6. She also gave some to her husband, 
and he ate it. See, a lot of times, we don't want to sin alone. We never want to sin alone. Yeah. Let me get Nathan 